So Andy, I can't believe how we haven't met before. We both had a similar kind of journey, different in many ways, of course, but you are to me one of the true pioneers of electrification, who I think for a lot of people, maybe the younger people, don't actually know where your origin came from in terms of that electrification mm -hmm. perspective. So you're at Nissan, you pop up in Revenge of the Electric Car, you're a champion of, uh, of uh, the LEAF, of course, the development of that, and of um, uh, 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 you know, a whole bunch of focus in and around this and on electric vehicles. Yeah. And then it seems you did a kind of volt fast. There you are at the heart of electrification, and then suddenly you're at the helm of a British classic um, prestige sports car company. Can you give us a sense of how that happened and why it wasn't a volt fast? Well, I certainly don't think it was. Um... I suppose I started on electric cars. It's probably 15 years ago. Yeah. When, when, as I, I think it's fair to say that Nissan was a, a pioneer in the thinking, uh, and obviously, um, you know, Tesla has played a big role in terms of the identification and, and popularization of electric cars. But Leaf probably started first, and um, yeah, I was I led that project. Yeah. Um, and the and the and the, the, the MV, MV 200. Yeah. And, I suppose had I not left uh, Nissan, there was a there was at least two others that were in the in the pipeline. Um, That's intriguing. But I mean, the, the, the two are not incompatible. I mean, I came. I, I, I mean, I had the opportunity to, to become the chief executive of Aston. Aston. Yeah. What's not to like about that opportunity? <laughs> and it's the last British car company, and I kind of set a raison d'être of, of basically making sure that Aston is the well the last British car company, or the first British car company, yeah. whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but basically, that it survives the next 100 years. Yes. And in that context, you have to bring that electrical experience to bear. Uh, you know, and, and basically, right from the very beginning, almost day one, I said, we need an electrification strategy. Yeah. Wow. Electrification of Aston Martins, yes. um, so hybridization, um, and the development of a strategy for Lagonda where Lagonda is only a BEV brand. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's been incongruous, this, this switch, this change, because I can clearly see, I follow these things, as I think you know, quite kind of forensically, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that development now that you have with the product, that building of the supply chain, working with Williams, and correct if I'm wrong, so the Rapid-E is the first vehicle to have a British manufactured and designed battery inside it which is the, the hyper battery, which is a battery factory in the UK. Perhaps a lot of people don't even know there is one. Mm. And um, obviously that's come about really because of your partnership and cooperation with, uh, with Williams. Um, and are there any, any other areas where that's kind of seeding of the supply chain has been going on, which is part of your, your ambition and your plan? Well, well clearly to make, to, to make a, a great British car company, you need a great British supply base. Um, there's a lot of talk about um, funding of battery factories and stuff like that in, mm. in, in the press at the moment. Um, the reality is much of it is not very useful to us as a, as a high performance manufacturer. Yes. Um, so we, we're looking for specific, specific types of batteries. And obviously we turned to Williams as um, a provider that had been very much in the Formula E space. Yeah. Um, and you know, bring their skills to, to, to bear with our skills. You know, electric cars are interesting. You see a lot of startups in electric. There yeah. are there are 400 uh, startups in China alone. Yeah. And, and what, of course, is is driving that is the the apparent ticket to entry um, is simpler. An electric an electric car is simpler than a, yeah. than an internal combustion engine, at least superficially. Um, Superficially yeah. is exactly it's, the word. Yeah. Be, and and what, what all of these guys forget is that whilst you can, you can perhaps get your head around the, the, uh, the motor, the inverter, the battery, the, the battery management, you've still got to wrap a car around it. And, yeah. uh, you know, from, from those 15 years of experience, you know, I, you have to be careful about things that batteries hate. Batteries hate drag. Batteries yeah. hate weight. Yes. Two of the things that sports car manufacturers are really good at. Yeah. Uh, and Formula One teams are very good at. Yeah. So, so by basically exploring our, our strengths as a manufacturer, 
by bringing the, the, the supply chain, by nurturing the supply chain, yeah. my goal is that the UK has, has, has at least the, 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 the seeds of um, a, a longer lasting ability to, 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 have, to be a manufacturer of electric cars. The, the moonshot is an interesting, because the, 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 it's very interesting, because it, it was a, a narrowly defined uh, problem. And people could get people could get around it and understand what what that needed to happen in order to solve that problem. I, I think the problem the, the, the problem is that our politicians around the world uh, are probably ill-educated in terms of of, of really climate change, uh, yeah. really really the issues around the use of carbon, and and you seek a populist type of commentary. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You have to look at all of the other causal factors. Of, of, if, if CO2 yeah. is the problem, then, then you know you really do need to look at uh, the marine industry, yep. uh, farming, agriculture, absolutely uh, uh, right, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, air travel, etc., yes. etc. Et if it's if it's pollution in the city, well, you know, let's take London just as an example. Now, Fifty percent of the of the particulates in around in and around Westminster are caused yeah. by public trans transport. Okay, so let's let's look at how you quickly move. <laughs> Buses and taxis to electrification, oh, uh, and and, and there, there you, have a, you very quickly yeah. have a solution. So the point is, define your problem, define what you want to solve, and then let the industry go at it. Any of these yeah. companies, it's oh, just I, the I, industry is maturing. People are, you know, moving around in these ways where they're cross-fertilizing ideas, experience, you know, knowledge. It's, it's natural. It's natural in 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 any revolution. There are a few. There are a few experts that, that, that do very well out of it. Yeah. They move around and do do stuff. They're 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 nurturing their own experience, but of course they're also fertilising the ground and, and and creating circumstances for other people to learn. Yes, and that's yes. why I, I love the fact that we we do it at Aston. Yep, we do it in the in the UK, and you know if you think about what the UK is really good at, the UK is really good at making a low volume luxury and sports cars. Yep, so. I have to smile a little bit when I see, you know, governments and, and, and commentators talking about a mega factory that can make, you know, mass manufacturing of batteries. It might be very interesting. Talking but again. It's talk. It's yeah. just talk. And the, the amount of money that they talk about putting in is a, is a drop yeah. compared to what the European Union is talking about right Correct. now. So, so if you want to be serious about batteries, let's get serious. Absolutely. Yep. However, actually, probably be better off nurturing our low volume industry because low volume industry generally also means uh, high, high price, luxury, yeah. which is the right end of the industry to really start to talk about making profits out of electric cars. Electric car technology is expensive. Uh, yep. you, you, need, you need a high price to, to even contemplate making a profit on these cars. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I really believe this because, I, as you, again, I think you know, I've done a little bit of work with Marty Rimac, mm -hmm. and I think I dropped you a message a few years ago where I said, uh, you, should, you should really know about this company and in Croatia, and you just sent a very nice note back saying, thank you very much, yes I do. <laughs> Obviously, so, there's yeah. certain aspects of an electric vehicle which are similar to any electric vehicle, peak torque from rest. Yeah. So how do you blend into that with the integration of things, that character and personality of Aston Martin? I think I felt, well I wasn't driving it, I think I felt that in the Rapid E. Um, yeah. So how, how is that working? How you, what is a challenge for your teams to do that. So you make choices right from right from the very beginning. And it would have been, I suppose, the sports car manufacturer, it would have been easier for us to say, let's have a ludicrous mode or, 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 yeah. or the equivalent. Actually, given given our background, um, what we made a decision that we wanted to be able to do at least a couple of laps of the Nürburgring. Right. Which moves you to a different, uh, different profile of use, different chemistry, in yes. fact, and a different charging. So we don't look for outright acceleration. Uh, we obviously look for relatively low drag and relatively low weight, and we, took, we, we ultimately we, we tune around torque rather than power. Yes. Uh, and what you're looking for is a car that is more like a GT car if it was in its petrol guise, yeah. uh, where you're able to, to, to use that torque more effectively, but not necessarily draw on peak power. The car that you, you drove in today has an enormous uh, torque. I it think certainly it's did. Yeah. 950 yeah. newton yeah. meters, I think. Crazy. Um, yeah. And and it's it's tuning around that. That's where the character of of the GT comes. And obviously, a GT uh, character is in tune with 
with, with what an Aston Martin stands for. Yeah. Now the question for us actually is, is does that prevail when we start thinking about Lagonda? Mm. Lagonda obviously a separate brand, obviously a longer history than, than Aston yeah. Martin. It was formed in 1899. Um, it's more of a luxury. It used to compete with Rolls Royce and Bentley. Is that tune, that, that characteristic that we're creating for an Aston, is that appropriate to a Lagonda or perhaps do we want something else? But these are, these are questions that as the product planners have to answer because you're yeah. talking about the DNA of the car. Yes, I think there's a great place for prestige, for high value, for hypercars, for electric cars that Marty Rimac makes, that Pinion Farina make, that you're making, because I think that breadth of product certainly stimulates, as you mentioned earlier, where is the profitability, where is the supply chain kicked off and created. These are enabling technologies and, and people to make the whole market work. Yeah. And do you really believe that? I do, but do you really believe that people do either A, understand that, or B, believe that it's a credible proposition, then that we're not just saying it to as an excuse to justify you know, right. having all this exotica. But you, there's, um, there's two things that have to happen. If you if, if you believe in electric technology, as clearly we do, yeah. uh, and you want to see mass adoption, as clearly we do, um, then two things really have to happen. Uh, one, first of all, you've got to stimulate customer demand. And at the moment, the predominant um, uh, ingredient to customer demand is is the uh, grant aid yeah. uh, that various governments around the world give it. And you can see that, you know, last month, yeah. sales came down because government took uh, yeah. incentives off of plugins. Yeah, and China's in an interesting place. And China's right in an now. interesting yeah. place. So you've got to get above two, around 2% 2 market share, 2% of the TIV, before you get this, 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 this kick. Yeah, so momentum. Yeah. So this is the first point. Second point is the manufacturers have to be profitable. And the problem with electric cars is, and I know everyone you know, will go, oh, that's a dirty word, it's profit. The reality is that you need to make profit in order yeah. to reinvest and yeah. reinvest. You've got to start coming down that Moore's curve of technology. Yeah. And, and to do that, you've got to have more and more investment going in. The best way of, 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 of starting that is in the Exotica. Yes. So it's in the sports cars, it's in the luxury cars, where you've got higher margins, um, you've got pricing capability, and that's where you'll find a lot of the early adopters. Yes, and I, I guess if you can get to the extreme end of capability, if you're going right to those parts of battery performance, uh, motor inverter performance, etc., power electronics, if you can then finesse things at yeah. that extreme, I won't say it's easy, but then the rest of the stuff comes quicker. Yeah, it does. It, Look, it, you also got to read perceptions. I think it's almost gone, but there's still that perception that an electric car is a milk float. Yeah. Uh, actually, if you're up the other end, if you're in the Rimac, uh, and, yep. and hopefully, um, you know, uh, uh, rapid area, you can, yes. you can dismiss those preconceptions about yes. what, what battery technology gives you. It's funny you reference uh, a milk float because the first car, uh, first electric vehicle I ever drove, I was 11 years old and I used to help Tony Scarf, the milkman. I had to find him at four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday to help him on, on the milk round and he let me drive the milk float sometimes. <laughs> so that's the first one I've, I've driven. And I've, well, I didn't drive the Rimac because Marty took me out in it. But so I've actually been in both those extremes, okay. which uh, I suppose is Partly because I'm knocking on a bit, but you know. And you can see the, the immense movement in technology yes. over that period. Oh. That was a, a platform full of uh, uh, lead acid batteries yeah. that you were, you were in on the, on the milk float. Yeah. So very advanced usage of uh, lithium ion batteries in the Rimac. Yeah, a a amazingly so. And then it's a bit confusing at the moment as to, well, what do you actually mean by ban? You know, what is being banned? Why is it being banned? Yeah. How does it all come together? How do you well, sort that out? I think it starts with, with governments. It's not just the UK, as you say. The governments being confused, to be frank. First of all, we, what, is, what are they trying to solve? I think governments should start with the problem and you leave engineers to solve the problem, right? 100%. So, so, you know, yep. basically, are you, are you trying to solve CO2? Yep. Or are you trying to solve air quality? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, diesel engine is, is a pretty good solution to CO2, but it's not such a good solution to air quality. So yep. if you're looking for a blend, then, then there are various ways of, of, of thinking about appropriate technologies. Mm -hmm. What I think government makes a mistake is by picking technology winners because they're, yeah. they're not, I, I, as an engineer, I don't know what technology is going to be around in 2040. Yeah. So I have no clue how, an, how a non-engineer yeah. would know that. So I, I think what we've got to do is we've got to have 
we've got we've got to allow innovation to mature undoubtedly batteries play a big role in the future but you know we shouldn't exclude um, hydrogen and we also shouldn't exclude e-fuels yeah uh, so I think you know it, it, you know ask me to, ask me to stargaze or, or crystal gaze I think there's probably still uh, combustion engines around in 2040 and they're probably they're probably not using carbon as a as, as, a, as a combustion um, but you know uh, there are plenty of alternatives which are in in the labs right now which which could provide an alternative and there's sometimes there's some type of customers where battery just pure battery is perfect there's going to be other times where where internal combustion with batteries hybrids is going to be the right way to go and there's going to be some places perhaps in commercial vehicles where hydrogen is the right way to go but i'm sure that we won't be 100 percent electric in 2040 yeah. and that the the way that it's presented actually it's presented as electrification yeah uh, it is, not, yeah. not not very not careful the, political very careful yeah. clever wording or not yeah. so clever wording um because that includes hybridization um, but i'm sure that uh, Anyway, engineers, you, you can't bind them to one direction. They will invent, they, they, they will innovate, and they will come with alternatives. Well, that's the, that's the key point, and uh, you, know, you need to preserve jobs. You've seen actions taken uh, in the last few years in the UK, for example, essentially the demonization of diesels, which has had a significant in, uh, negative impact on our own, on our own car industry. Yeah. Um, likewise, I suppose, uh, and I'm not going to get into the politics of it, but the uncertainty around Brexit, yeah. undoubtedly creating, you know, caused by politicians, undoubtedly yeah. cr create, creating uh, uh, problems for our industry. So you, you're right, you've got to do the two things. I mean, one, you've got to, the, the, the car industry will solve these problems, whether it's, this question is whether the UK is involved or not. And, and yeah. you know, it's my, my intention is not, not to involve, get, get into big debates, just get on with it. Yes. So what you, lessons have we got to learn, if any, from, from China, do you think? Well, well, China is ahead on electrification and, um, um, you know, there are, you can you can identify lots of negatives around the, the way that China manages itself, but but what it on the positives, it works in five-year plans, and it and it basically creates a plan and it executes as a plan, yeah. and and and, it, and, it, and the plan is executed almost perfectly in each of those five years. In other words, there's a, a long-term thought process, right? And there's not so much of the populist movement. Uh, around getting things done so basically if you want they make good long-term decisions I mean clearly let's you know I, I don't think that they're they're moving down the electrical electrification strategy just because of the uh, the thought of a clean planet very clearly they looked at it and said how can we leap from yeah. the West uh, oh, yeah. in, 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 uh, in it's, it's a strategic move I think it's quite smart they've proved it's correct 8% of their TIV right now is, is, is electric vehicles. Yeah. The rest of the world is 2%. Yeah. So they're mastering that technology. And from that position of strength, you can imagine how they might, yeah. how they might uh, you know, get to more domination in, 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 in the world. Yes. So quite smart as a, as a strategy, that ability to think long term is their advantage. As I say, there are many disadvantages and many things that you can criticize but in terms of, of, of that particular point, it's almost certainly the reason why China is leading the world in, in, in EVs. Well, I think to that point, just to conclude, uh, I'm not a China expert. I'd like to see myself as a bit of a specialist on a few things. I go there from time to time. I think your vision, your focus on what you have, the heritage of both Aston Martin and Lagonda, I think positions you very, very well to be very successful in China. Um, you know, I don't know how that kind of fits at the moment in terms of how it is, but I'd be very confident, you know, if I were in your shoes, of all the global markets, the one where, you know, there's clearly the opportunity for great growth, is that one. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you heard any of that. It's right to uh, finish an interview with, uh, I've had many electric cars with, uh, with, with yeah. the internal combustion engines <laughs> in the background, but, yeah. uh, but maybe it makes a good contrast. It does, it does. Andy, I've got to say, it truly has been a thrill to meet you, and I am a huge admirer because, you know, any kind of uh, uh, new innovation, any, any kind of...
uh, new industry needs its champions and needs people to stand up and be counted and do stuff, not just talk about it. And you're a doer, so I'd just like to say thank you very much for doing that. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you for talking to me. Yeah, cheers, Andy. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.